Life is Strange has been a journey, and an adventure certainly worth taking part in. Across the year, the game has had its episodic releases give a new standard for expectations in the choice-based adventure genre, with exploration and plot-twisty heavy time manipulation plot. This last Tuesday, the final episode in the five-part series was released after a thrilling cliffhanger ended the previous outing. This is a discussion of the episode itself. There will be a non-spoiler talk and a spoiler talk. Feel free to use the annotation to jump ahead to the spoiler talk on the entire episode, but the non-spoiler talk considers episode 1 through 4 fair game. This is your warning, and it will be the last one for this particular topic. Life is Strange, episode 5, dubbed Polarize, is the finale to Max's attempt to save the town and the lives of those in it. After tracking down the cause of Kate's humiliating video, Max and Chloe discovered the actions of the mentally ill Nathan Prescott and discovered the Dark Room, a hidden photography studio with binders of photos depicting the kidnapping of many teenage girls from around the area. Within, the location of Rachel Amber's corpse was found. As the two go after Nathan for killing her, they are lured into a trap where Chloe is shot to death and Max is drugged to immobility. Max watches as her friend falls to the ground and a man looms over her. It's her teacher, Mark Jefferson. Polarize picks up after, and the adventure continues with familiar tunes and more indie music scenes to create solemn moments. The silence is used surprisingly well as the depths of character psychology is explored throughout the episode. Lip sync is as bad as always, but if you've managed to make it to episode 5, it's you've probably gotten used to it by this point just like me. Graphically, the episode is basically just on par with the others. Don't Nod didn't make any real attempt to go above and beyond and, and instead ended up just focusing on continuity with consistency with the other episode. The episode does do a good job of mixing up the locations by having a combination of the new locations they add in and a significant repurposing of old locations to make new locations or to offer a new look on previous locations with those same assets. Compared to the occasional new location of previous episodes, it gives a greater feeling of freshness to the environments than ever before. With the presentation offering a minimum of status quo to follow up the dire situation posed at the end of episode 4, Life is Strange sets up a potential for a riveting finale. Early scenes do actually extremely well to establish the premise of the episode that it is going for. It feels natural and keeps the player at the edge of their seat. The last act, though, does not. The final set of circumstances throws the pace of the story into a standstill as it explores new perspectives on almost random aspects. The intent seems obvious, but much of the content comes from left field and adds, a little, and adds very little overall to the plot. Bits and pieces of the sequences feel substantial and does what it's supposed to overall, but there are entire scenes that I feel add literally nothing to the story. I can't really say more, so I'll, know, I'll go into more detail in the spoiler talk. Throughout the series, the game has provided excellent opportunities for it to vary the intensity of choices and allow for choices via exploration. Because of the nature of the premise of this episode and the roads Max ends up traveling on, these aspects become less prevalent in episode 5. In fact, the game offers less than a few major choices to the episode overall. Previous choices come up in dialogue and often get thrown in your face, but actual plot impact is hard to see or isn't there, so previous choices don't really have a whole lot of effect overall. Then you have the ending. Conceptually, it pulls at the heartstrings very well and has a couple significant deviations. However, I felt it fell quite flat when it comes to closure. Don't Nod tries hard to be open-ended, leaving more than a handful of questions unanswered and leaving main characters' fates up to the imagination. The lack of a real feeling of impacts on choices from earlier episodes is another issue that pops up, with the open-ended ending being one of the biggest violators. There are a few more issues that I have with the ending, but I'll speak more of that in the spoiler talk. Life is Strange, episode 5, ends the series on a bit of a flat note. It was competent, good, and has a lot of really good ideas. Some late sequences do a lot to throw a wrench in the momentum and leave a bit of a bad taste in at least my mouth. It still has a pretty good finale. I'm probably focusing on my criticisms a bit heavily, but sometimes it's just when you have wasted potential, that's what stands out the most. You can still enjoy it, it's still good, but don't get up your expectations too high or they could come crumbling down pretty heavily. Spoiler talk time! Last warning, episode 5 will be talked about with no restraints on spoilers and such for the rest of the video. Here's your buffer to jump out if you need it. My biggest problems with the episode is mainly the second half, with the nightmare and the ending itself. 
As a climax of the tension-filled episode, much of it was underdeveloped or even nonsensical to the plot. The first parts of the episode are excellent, taking an intriguing route through the timelines as Max struggles to find a reality that can save everyone. She fails miserably and is left with the final option of sacrificing Chloe or the city with everyone in it. But before that, she apparently needs to go on this long, drawn-out nightmare. Not really much happens, and stealth sections are thrown at you in between new perspectives of the situation offered that seem like out of left field. The ultimate point of this all is clearly to teach Max that her insistence on saving Chloe is what is causing the tornado, but the game does this in the most inane way is she's constantly being belittled by the rest of the cast and ideas that seem more like conspiracy theories are brought up. The constant painting of Chloe as an antagonist feels notably out of place. The post idea that Max was only ever doing this for popularity is an interesting concept, but the ending after that does nothing with any of these ideas, nor do some of them even really apply to the decisions or concepts that come after this in the first place. As a teaching method, it feels more like it's trying to bully Max into making the decision to sacrifice Chloe than anything else. Then you have the issues of why this happens at all. Why is the universe trying to teach Max a lesson? It would make some sense if it was like Max's subconscious speaking to her through her nightmare uh, about her true feelings on the subject, but that doesn't really meld with the ending in the first place. None of these are brought up again, and many of those ideas would really trivialize the choices at the end in the first place. Having Max see Chloe as an enemy means sacrificing her loses its impact. Having Max become a character who really just is in it for the popularity doesn't meld with having the situation in the end in the first place. It doesn't really make sense to even bring that up at that point. What does it matter to people to save each other's lives about their initial intentions? Now, after some post-episode research, I am a bit aware that quite a few of the ideas brought up in this section actually reference theories created by the fanbase between episodes, and that the entire section is pretty self-referential in the first place. A lot of this was actually pretty funny, the bottle part in particular. The problem is that if the entire point of these imaginings were to just give shout out to these theories, they're still out of place and come off as nonsensical at this point in the story, especially to those who have never actually looked those up or thought of those particular theories themselves. This is regardless of how good the theories they were before the episode started. I don't know, the entire section felt off and stalled the story in its place for way too long. The episode would have been much better served by a more focused sequence with the same purpose. A lot of the issues I've been having really can be posed in questions starting with why did or what happened to. The ending brings up two choices, sacrifice Chloe or sacrifice the town. If the game had its way, it feels like they wouldn't even give you a choice. The sacrifice town option is incredibly anticlimactic, with the two making their way out of the town then just credits after that. The sacrifice Chloe ending is better as it gives a relatively lengthy sequence about changing the past and what happened instead. It even ends with some very deliberate symbolic imagery that ties together the main plot well. The other ending, in comparison, feels like whoops, try again ending. Very much a bad ending in every sense of the word. The discrepancy makes the feeling of choice lost on the singular main major choice in this episode. I, I can't emphasize this enough. There is si one single major choice in the episode, and that is the only one, and it doesn't feel like it has any real strong impact when they make out one of the choices to be, like, bad in the first place. Ugh. <sighs> Neither ending really offers much in terms of closure either. The sacrifice Chloe brings together the plotline well, but for a series with dozens of little choices and a large cast of characters scattered throughout, it feels almost obligatory to do something beyond wrapping up the main plotline. I mean, the first two episodes already had this down with the montages of the characters as it ended. Something as simple as picture-based credit scene could have been achieved this. It stands out because there's nothing on this front. Absolutely nothing. We get to know nothing about the fates of everyone. We just know, oh, did they live? Did they not live? I mean, possibility of sequel or no, we still want to know something. Even something small would have been appreciated. Then you have the fact that they didn't even try to explain why anything happened. Why did Max have the power? How, did, how the hell did Chloe living cause a tornado? How on earth does the power work to begin with? The game decides to just drop tons of the plot strings on too many fronts, and it makes it hard to enjoy the ending when that com when you have this complex story with lots of things happening, mysteries all around, and you drop a bunch of those plot strings. 
I still enjoyed the episode. There's just so much that could have been better, and I, I know I probably sound like I'm being really harsh, but I tend to focus on the stuff that sort of pisses me off. And when it comes to a finale, when the ending is pretty underwhelming and flat, it stands out so much because there's just too much wasted potential. 